Hi, I'm Jane Harvey. I'm a Tellington Touch practitioner and this is my dog Otis. He's a Border Collie. In my previous video I talked in quite a lot of detail about the Clouded Leopard Touch which is one of the main touches from which all others evolved. An adaptation of the Clouded Leopard which if you recall is using the pads of our fingers in a circular movement of the skin. Just to remind you how that looks. With some dogs, using the fingertips, the pads, sorry, that can be a little invasive. For dogs that are a little bit touch sensitive, it's quite nice to introduce them first to a different sort of touch, and that's called the lying leopard, for which we use the whole outside of our hand. So the points that make contact are just round there. With the clouded leopard, we're making contact with the pads. Lying leopard is a the hand lies against the body and the whole of the hand moves in a one and a quarter circle. We're always lifting the skin, we never pull the skin down. We find that has more of an effect. It's a very calming touch, good for body awareness, good for relaxation, but also good, as I say, for dogs that are less comfortable with the slightly more invasive clouded leopard. So we can use this on areas of the body that are large enough. When it comes to smaller areas of the body, um, the, the, the muzzle, the head, the legs and the tail, we do sometimes need to go up onto our very tips of our fingers, making sure we don't have long nails. We find that the skin is slightly more taut in certain areas. The skin needs a little bit more help to move. So when we're working around the head, the base of the ears, we use what's called a raccoon tea touch which is exactly the same as the clouded leopard using the pads we simply go up onto our tips of our fingers so raccoon I'll do a little bit on Otis you're enjoying that Otis always watching your dog's demeanor if they ever look uncomfortable we stop and move to another area of the body where we know they're comfortable we can use raccoon all over. We don't have to just wait for small areas of slightly more taut skin. It's very good for reducing swelling post injury or operation. Um, but it's nice to have a little combination. So I'll probably start with some clouded leopard. I might go into a little bit of lying leopard. Good boy. Good boy. He does look very relaxed from this side, which you can't see. Then I'm back onto a little bit of clouded leopard round the base of his head and then I may go up onto the tips to work round his ear base. Oh, that's nice. Good boy. And round the muzzle. So we're just, as with the clouded leopard, we're just using enough pressure. I'm swapping hands now as he's moved. Just enough pressure to move the skin. We're not digging in and we're not going just loosely over the fur. Doesn't do any harm. That's the thing about tea touch remember that if you do it wrong nothing happens. So it's quite reassuring really. You don't need to worry too much about doing it perfectly. It is. Come on darling. Good boy. You are such a clever boy aren't you? So now I've swapped hands but remember to go clockwise still and lifting. So I'm still doing a little bit of clouded leopard here. I'm going to switch to lying leopard which you can imagine and do this on each other to feel the difference is a softer touch good boy and then onto smaller areas we go on to raccoon good boy good boy and he looks fairly relaxed with that his eyes are going Using the raccoon touch is, is a, a very good way, as I say, of bringing awareness, but also of reducing swelling and tension in the body. Um, likewise, with the clouded leopard, it's a very calming and relaxing touch. So for a dog that's a little bit wired, a little bit stressed, a little bit nervous, it's a good way of calming them down. But it's also about bringing body awareness, um, improving body awareness, and therefore confidence. A confident dog is a less reactive dog. Um, Otis gets an awful lot of tea touch and is quite a good example of that. He has his moments but 
it really does improve, uh, stimulates the nervous system, improves well-being, reduces tension, non-habitual movements reduce tension. So all of these one and a quarter circular movements that we do are about reducing tension, improving connection with themselves to their own body, making them aware of their own bodies, because body awareness usually promotes confidence. And it's about balance too. We're trying to achieve a physical balance. Um, there is a connection between posture and behavior. And by bringing together a physical balance, we tend to affect the emotional state of a dog. When you're um, working on your dog with um, clouded leopard, lying leopard, or raccoon for that matter, um, small sessions are best, um, 10 or 15 minutes of each, plenty. We tend to work perhaps a maximum of half an hour, really. We don't want to overdo it. Um, I don't think there's, in my opinion, a limit to how many times you should work on your dog a day, but I think it's a good idea to um, have a couple of sessions a day. Also, depending on what the dog's doing at the time, where you are, sometimes initially it's nice to introduce the work when they're relaxed with you on the sofa so that they can start to become familiar with how it feels. Other times you might need to do some emergency work on a dog if they're getting a little anxious. I don't personally feel like times of day in terms of working. I mean, I work on Otis when he comes to me. When I'm stroking a dog, I find I automatically work in a circular way. When you start to do Tellington Touch, after a while it becomes a habitual pattern of behaviour. And so while stroking is lovely, comforting, um, connecting, why stroke when you can T-touch? Because you're bringing awareness, you're doing a therapeutic uh, good for your dog, you're stimulating their nervous system and releasing tension. So, and it feels right. After a little while, it becomes natural to think circles. So, just think circular movements. The times to avoid doing T touch are if you're in a hurry, if you're stressed. It really doesn't work. You need to focus on your dog, you need to give your dog full attention when you're working on them. Having one hand on the dog and the other eye on the telly might feel nice, but it's better that your dog is receiving your full attention. If the household's a little bit busy and manic, take yourself away somewhere quiet um, where you and your dog can really relax um, so that you're both really enjoying it to the best of your ability and that the atmosphere and the energy is, is one of relaxation. Mm -hmm.